I am very happy to uh, participate in this uh, particular panel discussion. Uh, I thank uh, Argus Media House. Uh, you call it Argus or Argus? Argus. Argus, yeah. Uh, Argus Media House for inviting me. Uh, it allows me to get in touch with uh, people of Odisha, uh, where I have been only for the last eight months. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Jana gave a very nice introduction uh, of Odisha, different aspects. And he also organized it so well, depending on the background of the uh, guests on the dais, he mentioned several points. Uh, I really liked it. <clears throat> I also thank uh, Prakash Sahu for uh, giving a very enlightening introduction. Now let me come quickly to my point, uh, my topic, and that is uh, NEP 2020 in higher education, game changer initiatives. So what I will do is I have exactly 15 minutes time. What I will do is I will highlight a few unique features of NEP and I will uh, talk about how they are being implemented in IIT Bhuneshwar. Uh, it is not, the idea is not only to uh, mention what is happening in IIT Bhuneshwar, but also how people can implement these ideas, right? Because ultimately the implementation is very important. Uh, a policy may be very good, but unless it is implemented, you know, it is not effective. So, uh, the goal of uh, NEP 2020 or its vision is to transform India into a vibrant knowledge society and Vishwaguru. That is its uh, vision. Now, it has suggested several means to achieve this particular vision. I am listing here a few about which I will talk about the implementation. These few are flexible multidisciplinary education suited to 21st century needs, continuous teacher training and professional development, promotion of critical thinking rather than rote learning, and encouragement of scientific temper, inter-institutional collaboration and e-learning, instilling Bharatiyata and Atmanirbharata, industry academia collaboration. And there are several more, but as I said, I will focus on those whose implementation I can give examples. Let's look at multidisciplinary education suited to 21st century need. This is a unique feature of this particular education policy. Every education policy that India has had has some notable features. This multidisciplinary aspect has been stressed uh, a lot in this particular education policy. So now, how can we implement this? In uh, Bhubaneswar here, we have AIMS and we have an IIT. Now, how can these two get together? And uh, do something that is useful to the society. So here are the examples. So we are conducting a short-term course on artificial intelligence in medicine. We are also thinking of starting a M-Tech program later, next year. Artificial intelligence in medicine, uh, medical technology, in which there will be 10 students of MBBS and 10 students of B-Tech. So this is how we can put together a multidisciplinary program. Similarly, we have initiated 47 projects in which the doctors of AIMS and the faculty of IIT Bhuneshwar are together trying to address issues related to diagnosis, prevention and monitoring of diseases. Let me come to continuous teacher training and professional development. Now, this is something that is again another unique feature of the NEP 2020. While this was mentioned in earlier policies, maybe 25 years ago, but it was not stressed to the extent it has been done in this policy. For example, this year, uh, as a part of the policy, a unique program called Integrated Teacher Education Program, ITEP, has been launched. On 9th of August, an entrance test, all India entrance test happened to select teachers for this particular program. IIT Bhuneshwar happens to be 
one of the two IITs among the 42 institutions or universities which are going to uh, launch this program in their place. And what are the unique features of this program? So it aims at producing outstanding school teachers grounded in Indian values. All of you would have probably come across this statement uh, which is very uh, significant and very true. No nation can rise above the level of its teachers. And uh, in the introduction, he mentioned that uh, unless the teachers are inspiring, the students don't feel like going and attending the classes. They would rather like to, uh, you know, browse an internet, which is readily available. So it is very important to uh, produce high quality school teachers, because that is where the major foundation are laid. So uh, this particular ITE program tries to uh, produce outstanding school teachers. In fact, this is the first time an IIT is going to have an education related degree. So this is, for example, IIT Bhuneshwar is uh, going to offer BSc B.Ed. BSc in Physics, Chemistry or Mathematics and integrated with B.Ed. This is a four year program. About 50 students uh, are going to join in a month's time and uh, in this program, teachers are prepared for foundational, preparatory, middle and secondary stages of school education. So you know now, even Balavatika has been started. This is another unique feature of this policy that it has recognized the research which has shown that the brain develops to 85% of its full potential within the first 10 years. So in fact, unless you do a significant intervention, Within that duration, you cannot uh, aim at producing uh, excellence or genius. So foundational stage takes care of that. And then you have preparatory, middle and secondary stages. Preparing school teachers is important. Preparing higher education teachers is also equally important. So in IIT Bhuneshwar, we have launched a program for developing faculty in pedagogical techniques. It is not about talking, uh, it is not about developing people in their subject expertise. This has been going on for long. What the educational policy now tells is we must train teachers in pedagogy. And a lot of research has taken place in pedagogy which has given clear guidelines how any teacher can teach a subject better. I will mention a few more things shortly. So in this program, uh, the points that we cover are indicators of student learning and factors that affect this learning. The concept of teaching portfolio as evidence of teaching effectiveness. How to set questions at different levels of thinking. How to give feedback to learners and how to take feedback from learners. Right? To improve teaching and learning. How to make classes interactive. And what are the merits of oral and written exams. So all these aspects are covered in detail. Similarly, we can prepare for teaching even before stu uh, students become faculty. During the research program, we uh, would like to train our research scholars in assisting teachers well. So this is called teacher assistant, teaching assistant orientation program, abbreviated as TAO. Now, let me give you an idea of what is meaning of good teaching, a teacher portfolio. What are the aspects to which a teacher should pay attention? Now, here is an example of a teacher portfolio, which starts off by giving the details of the course, what is the textbook and what is the content and class composition. For example, you can see here what is the boys and girls uh, percentage and if it is a composite class which involves different disciplines, then that should be mentioned because the impact a teacher makes depends not only on the teacher but also on the composition of the class. It is more difficult to teach a composite class than, you, than to teach a homogeneous class. Similarly, you must provide what is the format of assessment. Now, there are a wide range of assessments that teachers can adopt. Modern pedagogy says, for example, you can have a closed book exam, you can have an open book exam, you can have in between an exam with a cheat sheet where you allow the student to come with a sheet with formulae and so on. So, there are a range of assessment procedures which the teachers are exposed to. Then attendance policy, 
overall student performance and grading up to five critical thinking level questions from assignments and exams together with marks answering time and mode of exam now national education policy says we must promote critical thinking the point is how do you promote it this is where teachers must learn to set questions at critical thinking level this is very important so in the portfolio we are asking teachers to specify what are the critical thinking level questions you have set and how did your students perform then questioning is a very important ability you want to do good research you should be able to ask good questions now it is unfortunate that our marking and grading does not take into account the quality of questions student asks it only depends on how well they are able to answer questions which we have set however we, we must give due credit to people who ask good questions so here the teacher has been asked to report at least up to five significant questions asked by students from the type of questions students ask you can figure out how much impact a teacher has made then activities and fraction of class time spent on activities research has shown lecture is not the best method of teaching lecture lecture is not the best method activity based uh, learning is deeper so teachers have to learn what are the different types of activities they can give to the students so uh, an ideal class here is here are the some models given here ideal class involves 10 to 15 minutes of uh, speaking followed by activity again 10 to 15 minutes of speaking followed by another activity and so on it has been shown that such a class has better learning then you have student feedback where students report how well did the teacher teach there are other things such as identifying and dealing with students needing special attention peer and expert feedback on teaching performance of students in a follow on course uh, i like to talk about this one measure of good teaching is how the student performs in later courses and real life that is a better indicator than how the student has performed in your own course because performance in your own course depends on what kind of question papers you set but real life doesn't you can't control the kind of problems real life will present so performance in real life is a better indicator of teaching effectiveness similarly performance in follow on questions uh, follow on courses in fact a very interesting study published by uh, uh, head of the department of mathematics from stanford university showed that teachers who got somewhat lower rating from students were actually better when they were evaluated based on the performance of students in later courses therefore whatever the student says in the feedback should not be taken as the sole measure of teaching effectiveness now i'll try to close within a couple of minutes mentioning some other points how do you promote critical thinking communication skills and scientific temper now research scholars are the ones who need these skills maximum so we are going to have a course which will give the students an experience of the following skills namely reading skill critical thinking skill experimental uh, experimentation skill communication and management skills reading is a very important skill that decides scholarship unfortunately in our courses students are never told why they should read what they should read how they should read how can a person read hundreds of papers students pass their exams during btech and mtech by just reading notes now when they are put in phd suddenly they have to read hundreds of pages now they find it very difficult so how can you do what is the meaning of reading hundreds of pages i'll tell you a very interesting uh, anecdote from vivekananda's life once vivekananda went to a library and picked up a thick book after a week he returned the book the librarian asked him now have you really read the book it is so thick he said yeah i have read it the librarian said no so many people have taken this book they have kept it for a month i don't believe you and then he answered something this is very important for people who want to do research he said some people read word by word some line by line some paragraph by paragraph some page by page some chapter by chapter and some book by book so it is not as though when you say you read hundreds of pages you are reading every word of that this is the skill how can i read 
I, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, identify where there is important information and just read that part. One can go on, I have a limitation on time. So these are all the aspects that we want to cover in a course for our research scholars. Interinstitutional collaboration and e-learning, we have launched a course along with IIT Guwahati using the online approach. Promotion of multilingualism and Indian languages. This is another uh, important uh, focus of national education policy. So we have stipulated that all project reports and thesis, the abstracts, which are one, one to two page long, will be written apart from English in any other Indian language of choice of the student. This is how we want to promote Indian languages in higher education. Finally, industry academia collaboration is also an important uh, point in national education policy. Uh, there is a, normally we know that in higher education institutions, if you want to join as a faculty, you should have a PhD. Now, there are many people who don't have a PhD, but they are very knowledgeable. These are the people who are manning, let us say, organizations like ISRO. Many of them are manning industries and so on. Now, how can we tap their knowledge? So this is a position called professor of practice, wherein a person who doesn't have a PhD degree, but is very knowledgeable and very senior, can become a professor in an IIT and participate in teaching and guiding students. I think uh, I have taken more time than 15 minutes. Uh, if I have exceeded time, I'm sorry for this. I thank once again Argus uh, Media Channel for initiating a panel discussion on such an important policy like national education policy. Thank you.